Hi, I'm Loom High, and today I want to show you some helpful tips for maintaining positive health. Or, you know, if you're the other kind of, if you're an anion kind of person, negative tips. I suppose there are people who are negatively charged who find me, it's technically negative equals positive for them, but I don't know. Anyway, these are my five dead positive, yay, yay, yes, yes, health advices. Loom High. <laughs> well being. Much like the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Or this following image is a hard thing to describe, as it can be unique for each person. Generally, well-being is about being happy, healthy, and to the same degree as great to carrot is to bolognese, content. Typically involves having a life that is meaningful, satisfying, and enjoyable, including good emotional health, positive relationships, meaningful activities, and overall general health. Spend some time. To figure out your view on well-being, words, images, ideas, all the things that come to mind when you think about well-being, write them down if you feel like it. And given this is an official activity where you have to write stuff down, I feel like it, I mean do it now. Knowing what well-being is, is half the battle. Knowing what creates and supports your well-being is far more fundamental. Well-being wheel. Best part about the invention of the wheel many millennia ago, most likely by a person who looked like this, or some say like this, was that you could use them to make pretty graphs. This is a good example of one. The well-being wheel. You can use this as a means to measure how satisfied you are with the general areas of your health in life. Mental health. This is how well you are able to cope with challenges. When things go wrong, can you endure the consequences? How well are you able to feel your emotions? Are you able to feel anger, sadness, disappointment in healthy ways? A person's ability to go through life with a level head, being able to feel emotions without letting them overwhelm them, is a sign of good mental health. Former Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd talked about two ways one can handle deep emotions. By either removing themselves completely from the feeling, or by facing the feeling and using it to resolve the issues a person has in their life. How well are you able to use your emotions? Physical health. Physical health is pretty straightforward. How do you rate your physical health? Do you have a balanced diet? Avoid unhealthy habits like smoking or excess drinking. In my case, it's drinking excess milk. This is literally just pure milk. Ah, I am very glad I am not lactose intolerant. And do you sleep? Hopefully not because of this video. The way food lovers can eat a lot of food is to eat a little bit of food for a long time. Moderation in habits leads to a long life of enjoying those habits. Spiritual health. How well are you able to find meaning in life? People justify their existence in many different ways. How well are you able to find your purpose and apply your values in daily life will determine your spiritual health level. Peace within yourself, through whatever greater purpose, will assist in improving all areas of your life. Social health. No man is an island. Our relationship with the other people around us is a potent part of our well-being. Whether you prefer to be alone most of the time, or prefer being around everyone all of the time, we need some degree of interaction with others to be fulfilled. Your score on this part of the wheel would be determined by how meaningful you feel your relationships are, your sense of belonging, and feeling of support by the people around you. Family health. Just like social health, but with a bit of blood involved. How would you judge the relationships with your family? Do you feel a connection and support with them? Financial health. They say money makes the world go round. Regardless, how well are you able to manage your income and meet your needs? Do you understand your finances? Are you living within your means? Are you prepared for the future? This has been Health Matters 1 Wellbeing. Session 2. Coming to know what matters, strength and values. No, <laughs> this isn't a lesson on figuring out what matter and energy is. That is a physics building down the hall. That's right, this is a university building, not a random household in general. When you sit down and think about how well-being is accomplished, you might think it is, well, 
being. It may be true in a broad sense. Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, interprets it that way to some extent. Practically speaking, however, well-being can be greatly supported by what actions you take and how you define their importance. This means knowing your strength and finding your values. I value milk. Do you think about how kind something is, or how efficient it is, or something else entirely? Once you have figured out what is important to you, consider how you are putting them into practice. Are you acting in a way where things are becoming kinder or more efficient? Are you contributing in a way you deem important? If not, are there any ways you can think you can do it? Even if it is something as simple as writing a new joke, something I'm failing immensely to do in this video, or making sure to say one more kind word today. Being able to knowingly do something you consider good will increase your well-being. Strength, an aspect of a person's character that not only exists in the world of role-play video games, but also apparently in real life. The things you learn on the job, eh? Understanding where you are able to best apply yourself is good at ensuring you're able to get the things you want done. Are you funny? Are you patient? Even quirks you aren't too sure are good can be used in a good way. If you feel you're arrogant, you can also make use of that to be willful. If we can see our traits and quirks as an avenue for doing good, whatever our definition of the word good is, then it is a big boost for well-being. Resources are important. You want my source of that? Too bad, it's attached to a re now. Take some time to consider what support and resources you have, as appreciating what you do have is brilliant to keep you aware of what you can use to go even further. Good family, good friends, education and accommodation. None of it has to be official either. If you know how to do something good, then that skill can come in handy even without the piece of paper to prove it. Hope is the thing with feathers, and such things as dreams and aspirations ideally are kept in mind. Although a person must have some level of satisfaction with their place in the world as it stands, having long-term goals which stretch years or even decades into the future is an unending source of activity and action. What long-term goals would you like to shoot for? Some common goals can be something like home ownership or visiting far away places. But it doesn't have to be something as simple as that. What matters is that you have a goal that you can then work towards. Even if you change that goal halfway through, the progress you make can always be useful in some way. Appreciating what you enjoy doing is also an important part of fulfillment as although large goals and impacting action is the main game, we must set aside time for activities we do for the art of the act. Hobbies and interests, be it cars, games or gardening, are good to note down. Even Winston Churchill had a hobby of amateur bricklaying to get away from the stresses of fighting a world war. When the big things are worrying us, and it seems like we are falling at every single step. Being able to take a break through simple, enjoyable work can be a lifesaver. Spend some time to think about your hobbies and interests. Session three, physical health. Let's get physical, physical. Let's get physical, physical. This one is about physical health. To understand physical health, a big help is a bit of health literacy. Literally. This is the ability to use, access, and understand health information. Do you know how to get good health info? Can you read that info? And importantly, do you know how to apply the conclusions of such information? Dr. Google does not count, by the way. How do you think you might find ways to understand your health better? Think of one or two things, like seeing a GP or ask and explain your medical history or health condition. Physical health can influence well-being in many ways. It is important to consider each aspect of physical health and how satisfied you are in each area. Areas you consider A-OK, -okay. areas that could be better but ain't too terrible, and areas you want to focus immensely on. Now you have figured out what needs improving, think of at least one thing you can do now to improve your physical health. For me, it's dancing. Ooh, yeah. Dancing. Mm, 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 mm. Session four, understanding and managing stress. Stress is an inevitable aspect of existence. 
In small doses, it helps strengthen us. But intense and continuous stress, much like when you overcook food, we're under us burnt out and broken. One way of looking at stress is through the concept of the bucket. Dear God. Imagine you have a bucket. There is a hole in your bucket, also known as a tap, dear Liza. The bucket represents your capacity to cope with stress and the tap represents your ability to dissipate that stress through pro-stress management straps. Everyone has different kinds of buckets as everyone manages stress differently. Stressful events are represented by adding water to the bucket. Financial issues, excessive workload, having to wait a full year before your favorite show gets a new season. Oh, I've been there. All that adds stress water to the bucket. If it overflows, then, well, you've got a problem, don't you? God, the floor, it's all wet. Now, about that tap. How does one prevent a bucket from overflowing? Scientists are still on the lookout for an answer to the question. Universities have dedicated years of grants and wings of their buildings to answering this fabled query. This is the best answer that we have come up with. The first step is to attempt to identify potentially stressful situations before they become major stresses like screening for a cancer so it can be treated before becoming a notable problem. Figuring out how to solve your problems is like getting a bigger tap. In this case, bigger is better. So the more problem solving skills we have to combat the stress, the better. Knowing your current stress fighting meta is important. What stress do you use that are helpful? What ones less than helpful? Hurtful even maybe. Knowing your current set will set you up for improving. Once you know what you have, figure out what you want. What strategies for managing stress would you like to adopt? They can be realistic or fantastical, based or cringe. Just jot down any nice sounding possibilities. Now you got the list of likables. Which one do you want to try this week? Getting started with one will set you on the path for stress management and give you a hella big tap to work with. Session five. Building and utilizing support networks. No man is an island. I'm gonna emphasize it again. Health and well being is greatly helped by having solid support networks, evaluating your current relationships in life so that you can find ways of improving your support networks is an excellent way to increase health. What is working well with your support networks and what is not? Where are your needs being met? And where are they caught lacking? Once you know this, the next step is to figure out what needs to change from that which does not work. How must we change our relationships or the way we think about our relationships that will allow our needs to be fulfilled? An important part of this process is realizing that a network works both ways. How can you help support people to better support you? A lot of relationships require people's needs to be respectively fulfilled in order to be healthy and sustainable. Now this is all figured out, what is the first step you are going to take to improve your network? What is something you can do now? Session six, making change, giving it a go. All of the above has an important aspect to it that will be discussed here. Like a rubber band corkboard, all entries in health matters link to one thing. And that's giving it a go. Like a rubber band corkboard, all entries of health matters connect to giving it a go, making a change. How are you going to make a change to improve your life? This fundamental aspect of these lessons will be what gets your life moving in a better direction. Whether it is a change in circumstances, habit, or mind. The first step in making a change is figuring out what kind of changes you'd like to make. Most changes aren't all positives, however. The first step in making change is figuring out what kind of changes you would like to make. And also how life would be different when that change is made because most changes aren't all positives. There will be drawbacks, cons and costs. Consequences are the nature of the universe. What are the pros and cons of making the changes? Try and list them down and compare them. Knowing what your strengths and values are, which you can use to make changes more effectively, comes into play. What can you draw upon to get this done? Remind yourself of what you are good at and where you take your stand. 
Are there any barriers to making this change? I'm not talking about a literal barrier like you're some mime or even a psychic light screen trick. No. What is something that is stopping you from making your change? Social ties, self-doubt, work or some other kind of reasons. Once you have figured out what is stopping you, try and figure out how to prevent them from stopping you. What can you do to address those barriers? You might not be able to stop something completely, but you might be able to mitigate its effects or change your goal to fit with the barrier. Now for the final step, the steps. What steps will you take to make this change? This is essentially the battle plan and you're about to pick one with some real chest hair. What is phase one, phase two, phase three? For even the best warrior is nothing without the best plan to follow.